like water. Now you put water into a cup, it becomes the cup. Put it into a teapot, it becomes the teapot. Now water can flow or creep or drip or crash. Be water, my friend. Before there was parkour, there were the philosophies of Bruce Lee and the amazing acrobatic skills of Jackie Chan. They truly paved the way into the art and science of the proper tuck and roll. I have been doing EUC now for six years, and in those six years, I've had my share of good and bad falls, scrapes and injuries, and broken bones. In my past, I have had falls in skiing, snowboarding, I've had several falls when I was rollerblading. In my case, it was a snake that caused me to crash when biking. When I took Taekwondo long, long ago, I learned the basics of falling and how to prevent getting injured. All my years of training and diligent practice helped keep me in great shape. However, the training that really helped the most were the 15 minutes per session that we spent learning the basics of the Judo fundamental of Ukeme, breaking a fall. We did this fall breaking over and over ad nauseum. Fast forward 30 years later, in 2019, when I already had four years experience with my EUC, I was on a group ride with my fellow one-wheelers. That day was a blast riding the rough terrain. At the end of the ride, I was in a rush and not paying full attention. I misjudged my turn and my left pedal was clipped by the inner steel support of the bridge. As I was falling and had microseconds to think, I decided that I shouldn't reach my hand out and possibly fracture my wrist or my elbow. I decided to pull my arms towards my body to brace for impact. My elbow pads absorbed enough impact to prevent a clavicular fracture. Unfortunately, I ended up getting a non-displaced right fifth rib fracture. A rib protector surely would have helped my situation. However, the bigger question is, could I have prevented that injury if I landed a certain way? Since then, I decided to really master parkour techniques to break a fall. I practiced and practiced following the many videos out there. Basically build up that muscle memory so the action becomes quite instinctive. Parkour pro Ryan Doyle has a great tutorial. Make a front stance, arms in. Back to front stance. I will post these tutorial links in the description. So what is it about the tuck and roll that makes it so effective? When properly executed, why does the rider get up unscathed as if nothing happened? Is there a scientific basis to what masters oh, yeah. Bruce Lee and Jackie yeah. Chan preach Hell and practice? Yeah. How you feeling, bro? Did you crack a collarbone? No, my sunglasses. <laughs> Your sunglasses too! This one here is the most impressive of all the tuck and rolls I have ever seen. I feel exactly how I wanted to. <laughs> You're right! Did you get that? I got it! That's awesome. Just eight months after my serious rib injury, unexpectedly I had fallen. Fortunately, I was able to use my enhanced parkour tuck and roll technique. I was able to get up 
with no serious injury at all. What is the scientific basis in breaking a fall with a tuck and roll? Why does it work? The National Geographic TV show Fight Science conducted an experiment. To avoid any copyright infringement, I will summarize as much as I can before I show a small clip of the actual experiment. First, they dropped a 180 pound dummy that was fitted with accelerometers to measure the speed and force of fall at a height of nine feet tall. This 180 pound test dummy had accelerometers placed on its chest and measured the speed and g-force or impact in a vertical fall. The vertical fall resulted in 18 g's or 3,000 pounds of force. This is enough to break a leg or two. Not surprising. Next, they had Parkour Pro Ryan Doyle jump from the same height. They fitted him with accelerometers in both shoulders, both waist and one foot. Ryan Doyle shows us his amazing skills in this death-defying leap. The average non-trained human would surely fracture bones or worse in this jump. Wow. The scientist was so shocked at the results this is the point where Ryan hits the ground with very little acceleration throughout the body. And then the bigger spike is when he rolled. But this bigger spike really produced very little force, equivalent to about a jumping jack. Ryan Doyle jumps off the ledge and does his special roll and makes it look so easy. If he had jumped straight down, 100% of that force would land on his knees, his spine, and eventually the brain. Not good. However, by applying a forward momentum, he is able to dissipate that massive kinetic energy in the roll, which makes it very harmless. <laughs> I, can't, I can't stress enough how important it is to drill basics, especially this move. But I am living proof that this stuff can and will save your life. Catch you later. How can we ride to prepare ourselves for the proper tuck and roll then? First, pay attention to the road and be aware of your surroundings. Number two, don't ride like a zombie, flex your legs and always be prepared. Number three, carve and sway with your shoulders. Whether front stands or side stands, carving sets up your ride for a proper tuck and roll should an accident happen. Not only does carving look cool, but it also has a safety function. Carving also alleviates some feet fatigue since you are alternating muscles when riding. Keep riding and always be prepared. Always. Well, that's it. I hope you liked this video. And if you did, I would appreciate it if you like and subscribe. That will motivate me to make more videos like this. I want to give a big shout out to the newly interested people in EU seeing and my Workplace to Jen, Brett, and Carmen. Hopefully you get into this and we can spread the joy. That's it. Thank you very much for watching. Until next time.